Hi, and welcome to Cindy's Adventures in Stitching. And today's episode is a little bit special in that we have been doing this for just a little over a year. We today reached 2,600 subscribers and this is episode 20. So there have definitely been some ups and downs through this process, but overall, I'm really glad that we did it because I have been introduced and made friends with several people because of floss tube, and that was the whole reason why we started it in the first place. So today we've got lots of finishes, well, a couple finishes, maybe three, and we've got some FFOs, and we have some whips, and we've got some plans for the future that we want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing that I wanted to show is a finish, and this is called Love is Patient, Love is Kind, and it's by Artful Offerings. And I found this, it's a tray that we, um, I found at a secondhand store called Trader Bucks. I don't know if they have those in other parts of the Midwest, but they, they have booths, people have things for sale. This was $4. Now I'm gonna show you the back. It's raw, but this is kind of a before and after picture. So the bottom of this tray looked like this, and I think it's contact paper. And I just, um, you know, um, what do you call it? When you, of course I can't think of it now because the camera's going, but when you um, make it into a frame, if you were gonna have it framed. And what I did was, um, Sam and I were talking about the best way to deal with that bottom. And he said, well, why don't you just punch it out and cover it and you won't even have to try and take off that contact paper. So that's what we did. I used quilt batting underneath this and then I just stretched it. That's what I was looking for, the term stretch. So I stretched it, tried to make it even. The wood, I painted it red first, just with a brush, just a foam brush. And then I painted it uh, over the red with black. So you can kind of see the red has come out. But I mean to tell you, I couldn't be happier with my $4 frame tray. There will never be anything sitting on this tray. <laughs> you <were> noted. <laughs> yeah, please don't ever put anything on this tray. What so was that's, it you had that time I used as coasters? Um, gosh, what was it? Oh, wool. It was a wool applique oh, yeah. that I had done. I'm like, no, we don't use those as coasters. I later learned that. Yes. Okay, second finish. This is a Brenda Gervais Bells of Christmas, and I started this at Stitch Away in January, and it was a quick stitch. I loved it, and I did a little bit of an experiment. So one of these, this is filled with stuffing just from a pillow, and then this one is filled with lizard litter. And I wanted to see which I liked better. I bought that lizard litter on Amazon, and I had never used it. And I got to tell you, I think I like the lizard litter better than the stuffing. It was so much easier to get it in the corners. And the stuffing, I mean, I poked and poked and poked. Now, this is pretty full. You can tell this one maybe not quite as full, but I just like the feel of it better. So I think I'll be, maybe I'll go to a pet store or something to buy bags of lizard litter instead of getting it off of Amazon. Because if I remember right there, it may have had a tiny hole in the bag when I got it. And so there was kind of lizard litter everywhere. Can you say it three times fast? No, I cannot. Because okay. that's a mouthful. And I finished it pretty much like they show on the picture. Put a little bell at the bottom, put a ribbon at the top. And, you know, I love those colors. So that was a really fun and fairly quick stitch. So got those two things done. Now, this is not cross-stitch related, but this is from a charm pack that I got at Missouri Star for like $5. And it's actually going to be a present for a, um, a friend <laughs> who probably never watches. So What happened to his head? <laughs> well, that's just the way it was cut. I mean, you get little five-inch blocks. So you got no head and then just a tail <laughs> yeah, and a but rabbit you got in a, the middle. <laughs> you got a bunny right there. That's good enough. Look, that one's cut really well. Now, I just love these colors. So I'm ahead of the game already for Christmas next year. Is that mine? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that 
very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least what the head. <laughs> okay. Project Ow. bag. Huh? What was that loud? In my ear it was. <laughs> Sorry. So this little project bag I made, um, I had downloaded this pattern on my um, machine for a project bag. And then I made a matching thread bed. Oops, upside down. A little matching thread bed. And I love these little thread beds. They're so fast, so easy. So from now on, every project bag I make is going to have a thread bed to match. And this is the way that I do my project bags, unless I'm going to do a vinyl bag. It has French seams in the uh, inside. Everything's fully lined, quilted. I might have even put a pocket in this one. I can't, yep, you can't really tell, but got a little pocket in it. So oh, somebody's getting fancy. I know, I know. I love making these. I really do. And we have a tutorial on how to make these with a French seam. I'm telling you, it's the easiest and it's the fastest project bag you will ever make. So um, I think I'll do a tutorial on how to do them with uh, directional fabric because there, it is a little bit different than if you have fabric that doesn't have direction. So that's like most of my sewing. It doesn't have direction either. No, your fabric does not have no. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, so let's go to FFOs. Being, um, this is the end of February, I had made, um, oh, that's what's going to be done. Okay, so this is going to be, there'll be several of these little pillows, and this is by Heart and Hand, and it is stitched on Seraphim Chai, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, 32 count Seraphim Chai. And I love this color to go with red. It just, I don't know, you wouldn't think that it does, but it kind of has a little bit of a, a red hue to it or a pink hue. So that's done. And then I finished the Collector's Heart, also by Heart and Hand. And it's stitched on the same fabric, 32 count Seraphim Chai. And the next one that I do is going to be, and I probably won't do this until February. The next one that I do is going to be the 2024 Collector's Heart. You realize it's March. Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, just pretend it's still February. <laughs> I was really trying hard to get it done by February. Oh, shoot. Oh, well. Next year. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Now, you, you started a calendar or something to tell you when to start these projects? Yeah, you want to take a look at that calendar real Where, quick? Where's that calendar at? Well, it's actually right here. Oh, that one. Yes. Is that the one that's supposed to have the stickers in it? <laughs> yes. I okay. haven't seen the first sticker. That's because I haven't been to the store. <laughs> so here is I all about that. January. Okay. I did a pretty darn good job yeah. of filling yeah. things out. Yeah. I wrote down when I started things. I yeah. uh, tried to put a check mark if I'd walked and if I had my water and all of that. So that's January. <laughs> Then February it's came. February. <laughs> There's nothing written anywhere. I know. I failed. I'm going to do better, though. I'm going to start. You to just told me it's March, so I'm going to get going on March. <laughs> just turn the page. <laughs> so this little sticker was given to me by my friend Kristen that I met at Stitch Away. And uh, we're going to talk about her in, uh, in just a little bit. But, yeah, I, I definitely failed in... February. But in in my defense, I did go back to work in February. So you worked what? Five days and we left for 10? No, I worked eight. Oh. I worked eight and then we were gone for 10. And now I worked all last week and all and so far this week. So and then we're leaving for seven. And then we're leaving <laughs> for seven. But that's also spring break. Spring break's in there too oh, for part of that. Yeah. Okay. So Anyway, I'm going to change my ways, and I'm going to start working on that. Keep it on top of the pile. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> Just a tip there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, I was on the coffee table, but oh well. Never saw it. I am making progress of Kathy Barrick, um, Heaven and Nature Sing. I just have a couple more trees to do here, and then I have to do this area up there. And I am going to finish this. You know, sometimes I really like to be a seasonal stitcher. And so when the season is done, I'm like, okay, I'm over it. I'm not going to work on that anymore. I did that for Halloween. Um, I'm not going to work on that heart and hand 2024 chart. Until 2025. Mm, maybe. <laughs> I'm just a year behind. It's your February project. Yeah. So, but I am going to get this finished. And um, so there's a lot of stitching in that. There was a lot of stitching in that. It was not hard. Is that one over one? This, you know what? I'm so proud of you. No, it's one over two. Mm. And it is stitched it, on. It's hard to tell from this distance. No, I don't have my glasses on. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> it is stitched on 28 count Lugana Brittany and the color is mushroom and I got this fabric at Keepsakes in Cincinnati and here's the really good thing I love this fabric very much I it could be like a 32 count and I would still love it but the great thing is that's only a couple of hours away so we can hop over there go to Jungle Gems there's a an antique store that we love over there so yeah, um, whiskey's on the way back for some peanut slaw. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could make a day of it and I could get more fabric. I still have a little bit left, like maybe, I don't know, a fourth of a yard. But um, I do really like this fabric a lot. And it doesn't stretch and I I just really like it. What was the name of that Irish bar we went through that day? Cock and bull. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, I'm impressed. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, there's wow. a little story to go behind this next piece. Sam always tells me, don't show people your mistakes. No, don't. We're cutting this out. You're not no, putting this in the video. This is part of it. This is part of it. Because I've come to a decision, I think. Well, I can't get that to clip on. This is from Brenda Gervais. Our Hearts is the chart. And uh, we recently got back from a trip to. Um, show. Let's shut the light off. Let's see if it shows a little better. Okay. Okay. So um, for Sam's birthday every year, we go up to the UP to uh, cross country ski. Sometimes we downhill, just depending. Or we go to mid Michigan, depending on who has the most snow. Well, of course, this is the winter of no snow. And we, a year ago, had reserved a cabin, a primitive cabin in the UP near the town of Ironwood. And the name of the ski place is ABR. Now, um, ABR has 101 kilometers of groomed trails to cross-country ski on, normally. <laughs> But they have had what we have had, which is unseasonably warm weather. Now, they did have a snow dump, I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Yeah, probably a month ago. And typically, they have a large, you know, base of snow. But this year, they did not. But we decided we would go ahead and go up anyway. And hopefully, there would be enough to snow on, or ski on, to snow on, <laughs> to ski on. And um, there was, when we got there, there wasn't much, but there was enough. And so we arrived on a Sunday. We skied that evening for a little while. And then Monday morning we got up and we skied. And Tuesday morning we got up and skied. But only for about an hour, hour and a half. Because with cross-country ski or skiing, um, you have to, it's just best to do it when it's really cold because when the snow starts to warm up this, your skis, because you're creating friction with your skis, um, it warms up on your skis. And then if you're not careful, you could go face first in the snow because you can stop. Now that's kind of extreme, but it definitely can happen. And each morning when we skied, the snow started to soften because it was warming up. Um, that first day was what, 35 maybe as a high. And then the next day 
it got really warm, like 40, 45. So that was the end of the skiing at that point because they'd had so much melt before then. But we stayed in a primitive cabin. And when I say primitive, it's primitive, <laughs> meaning there's no running water, there's no electricity, and there's no potty. But you would go back right now if you could. I could. I would. Because there's just something about being in a remote location like that. And we've done a skiing cabin a couple times before. But these are just really nice. And, I mean, talking about outhouses is probably not, doesn't have a whole <laughs> lot to do with stitching. But you kind of get in that mindset. And... Normally, when you're outside in the cold all day, and it does make a big difference what kind of gear you have to wear to keep you warm, and as long as you stay warm enough, it's fun. I mean, nobody likes to get to get sweaty and then get cold. But we have skied in, what, below zero before. Yeah, my favorite picture were 14 below. Yeah. And, I mean, we got icic icicles coming off our eyelashes and... Our, my hair has got ice on it, but that is really, I mean, I think we even got sweaty and had to shed a, a layer or two because yeah. we got cold we or got hot. Our, we were down to our base layer. Yeah. So anyway, um, this trip, we started, of course, from home, and then we went through Wisconsin, and then we went up to the UP of Michigan. And I knew that I wanted to do a special cabin stitch. And I needed to decide between this one or Heap on the Wood, which is also a Brenda Gervais with I Needle and Thread. And I finally decided when I got to Country Sampler which one I was going to do. I decided this one might be a little bit easier to do. I wasn't sure what my stitching conditions would be in the cabin because we'd never stayed there before. And I thought, well, this might be a little too much counting and I'd be distracted and I'd make a mistake. So I decided to go with this. <laughs> That's ironic. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, um... I stitched, uh, you know, in the evenings. And that's another thing about being in a primitive cabin. I mean, there's no, there's um, no TV. Now, we had our Bluetooth speaker. And, and what was really nice about this also is we could get a signal. So we had Motown night one night and we played cards. We never play cards, just the two of us when we're at home. But when we're in a situation like that, I like to beat Sam's rear end at Rummy. Uh, and just for the record, I won. You won a couple times. I also won. But um, we, I don't know, it's just really nice to be secluded and kind of cut off from everybody. And because the conditions were not that great, all the other cabins, the people canceled. So we were the only ones in those woods uh, from Monday until we left on Thursday. Uh, I mean, we didn't even see anybody walking, hiking, nothing. So... When we left there, uh, we went to mid-Michigan because they have a lot of cross-country ski trails. And then we could also downhill. Now, we ended up not taking our downhill stuff because we thought the conditions would be bad. But anyway, one night, and you know, here's another thing too. You know you're getting older when you leave dinner and don't go anywhere else. And you go home and crawl in bed and stitch. I mean, you only do that when you get a little bit older. So I did not realize that I miscounted on this very first little filigree. It's got one, two, three, and it should have four. The second one has four. And I didn't catch it until I started doing this checkerboard. And I got to about right here and I thought, uh-oh, I'm off. Where am I off? Because I knew that I had started this in the right spot. And so when I examined it closer, I realized, dang it. So I decided to go ahead and finish this checkerboard to see what it would look like. And I thought, if it's not bad, then I'll just leave it. Or maybe I can fake it in some way. Fake it till you make it. Well, it's off center and you can clearly tell that this square is not underneath this X. And this is a way over to the side, which I could live with that because, you know, there's another 
um, border thing that goes under there. But I just had to put it away. I just, I was done stitching them because I, um, I was so aggravated with myself for not catching it. So I posted it on Instagram and one lady said, you know what, just leave it. All of our work has imperfections. And I thought, well, you know, that's true as long as it just doesn't continue to be wonky, you know, as I'm moving on down. But then, you know, a part of me is like, I can't deal with that. It's not centered. Now, listen, I make mistakes all the time. If I can hide it, I am fine by hiding it. But the more I look at this, the more I think, you know, I started this when we went to that primitive cabin and we had such fun memories of that. Maybe I'll just leave it and not start over. So I can't decide. Well, it was the winter and no snow. So, you know, to have a little air in the, in the stitching kind of goes hand in hand. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> but we still had a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we had a really good time. So. I gained six pounds. <laughs> Cindy know. won't come clean on how much weight she gained. <laughs> That's because it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we ate so much food. Yeah, food. Sam cooked. Uh, so it's heated with a wood stove and he he loves to camp cook. And so he camped, he camp cooked while we were there. We had homemade pizza. We had um, Cornish game hens with stuffing that was out of this world. It was so good. What else did we have? A uh, big breakfast skillet one morning. Oh, yeah. We had a big mm. breakfast skillet. Mm, blueberry you, bread. You made blueberry bread. It was fantastic. So I planned the diet, assuming we were going to be burning calories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we weren't burning any calories, that's for sure. But I think that kind of talks to the the whole, you know, stitching is my hobby. So here's the mental health and stitching and camping is our hobby that we do. And we love it. You know, I think everybody needs an outlet. Everybody needs something that they really enjoy. And it doesn't have to be anything that costs a lot of money. You know, stitching doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't. But somehow it does. <laughs> but somehow it ends up <laughs> costing more than what I thought it was going to. But so having said all of that, it's time for a new start. And yeah. I am so excited. You, know, you were lucky we didn't bring our downhill skis because do you remember how many bags you brought back of stuff? Yeah, I know. There wouldn't have been room. No. <laughs> I've been left behind. You would have. I could have driven at home by yeah. myself. All right. So this, uh, there's a little story behind this. This was made in 1979, I believe. And my new friends, Jean and Angie, that I met at Stitch Away, along with Krista, uh, found this on the free table at Stitch Away, and they gave it to me. And Krista said to me, hey, you should stitch that when you go to Texas for the teardrop rally. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Now I looked at this pattern and I thought there's quite a bit of stitching involved with all that fill of the grass. And I looked and wondered if I could get by with not stitching that grassy part. I don't think I can because then you wouldn't have the water and you wouldn't have the trees. You wouldn't have a thing for the sun set to go on. So I think I will. I'm just going to stitch the the little piece. Well, I'm going to do happy camper first and then I'll stitch the little pieces and then I can fill with the green. And I think that'll be just fine. But to go along with that, I found. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. So um, when we left Country Sampler, we um, drove up to northern Wisconsin. Uh, what was the name of that town we went to? Rhinelander. Rhinelander. And we stayed there that night. And um, before we got to Rhinelander, we went to Wawasee. And there's a needle shop there called Needle... <laughs> we didn't go to Wawasee. We went to Wausau. Oh! <laughs> okay, well, that was close. <laughs> we went to Wausau. Okay. Okay. Oh, anyway, there's a, a stitching store there called okay. Needle House Works. And we even did a video on it. And, I mean shameless plug we may include that but um it there's a shop that's been there for years i would bet 20 25 years so it's stock full of stuff Is that needle and thread Is that what's called uh needle house works needle house works yeah and it has a quilt store attached to it yeah 
So I found this in the bottom of a pile and I thought, well, looky there, that's a teardrop. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll work on this a lot, but if I want something fast to just, you know, change a pace from this, I'm going to do this. And the same gal had another one and they're both from Camp and Craft. And this one is more vintage and they're seasonal. So she's got a Christmas, she's got a Halloween, uh, she's got a Valentine's. And then she showed a picture of doing it kind of in reverse. So she's got them on black fabric and she stitched them in white, which I thought that was kind of a neat. I don't think that's what I'll do, but I thought that was really neat. So that's going to be my new start. And I'm excited about that. I love a new start. I love to finish more, but I love to also start something new. And to go along with that, I ordered uh, from Thread Milk Designs her Statehood Splendor series of every state that we have visited. Now, this one is the Wisconsin. And um, I have the Indiana, but do you think I could find it? I looked everywhere. And I, I don't it's know what I did. It's not in the filing either. system? No, I hadn't got that far because no. I went back to work. <laughs> and have time. That got away a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, it has for sure. So I'm excited to do those as well. And we're going to take a trip out west this summer. So I'll be doing a lot of stitching on that kind of thing. And we did some antiquing while we were there. And I wanted to show you two things that I absolutely love. Now, Teresa Kogut had suggested that these little, um, they're not called scoops. Dustpan. Dustpan. This little dustpan, vintage dustpan. And I thought I can either do a small like Christmas and put in here since it's green, or I can do like a St. Patty's Day, either one. But I thought that, and this was cheap too. I can't remember what it was, like eight bucks. It was super cheap. So anytime I'm at an antique place, I'm going to be looking for these. And then this other thing I bought, which I think is just adorable, is a little darning box or sewing box, whatever you want to call it. It's very, very clean. It's got like a place for your thread and your snips. And I would just love to know who the seamstress was that had this. Did she enjoy sewing? Was she a quilter? Did she think of it as a chore? I mean, it's well worn. It has definitely been used. It's as smooth as it can be. So I, I was excited to find that. And that also wasn't very expensive at all. When you think about vintage sewing baskets and vintage sewing supplies or anything like that, they're always very pricey. I can't believe how much they asked for the drawers out of the old treadle machine oh cabinets. Oh my gosh. How much was that? $35 or something? For something, one drawer. For one drawer. It's yeah. crazy expensive. All right. So now we're going to talk about Country Sampler. That's in Spring Green, Wisconsin. It is a fabulous needle shop. It's also a quilting store as well. But their decorations, their de decor, their um, models, and they had a ton of samplers on the wall. They had a fantastic um, thread, thread or floss collection. They had everything you could think of. They had silks. They had... Uh, classic Color Works, Week Style Works, they had DMC, I um, can't remember if they had anything else, but they had a huge supply. They had fabric, but if you compared their floss inventory to their fabric, they had a lot of floss. And I did buy some fabric. Uh, in fact, the Our Hearts uh, is fabric that I bought there that I, I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool too to stitch it. I did buy just a few charts, not very many. This is called uh, Rabbits in the Round, and it shows it as a one color, as a mono color. But I decided I think I might stitch it, put those bunnies in different colors. And I thought that would be kind of fun to do. I kind of like to mix things up a little bit. So uh, I have that. And then I have um, this guy. It's called Carrot Top by Not Forgotten Farm. I take that personally. <laughs> Isn't he cute? I think he's just adorable. So um, I think those are the only two charts that I bought. So I, I really, 
I used some refrain there. And they had a great quilt supply, uh, quilting fabric supply, and they even had fabric that was uh, $6 a yard, $7 a yard. And they had some like fat quarter towers that were on sale. It's funny how quick that all adds up. Isn't it? it is, yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. Um, the neat thing is I am going back in May, at the end of May with my friend Diane and her friends Tony and Marsha. And uh, we're going to a retreat where Brenda Gervais is the de guest designer. And I... I just think Brenda Gervais is great. So she's way, way up there on my favorite designers. So I'm excited to do that. And so then primitive gatherings? we're going to hit primitive gatherings. It's at Country Sampler. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So we're going to hit primitive gatherings, which we stopped at after we went to Country Sampler the next day. And Sam had given me a gift certificate and I spent that and then some. <laughs> and uh, then we were going to go to... Um, stitching bee in green bay but i took too long at primitive gatherings and i did realize they closed at one o'clock on a saturday and so we missed that but then that's when we went up to not wawasee but wausau and we went to needle houseworks so it was all good it had a great great time so um then we smelled the smoke remember as we were leaving we discovered it was your credit card <laughs> <laughs> Why I fell for that one. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty easy. So we are going to show some uh, pictures of Country Sampler. And if you ever get the chance to go, it's worth the trip. Um, it was on my bucket list. And like I said, we are going to Texas pretty soon for a teardrop camper rally. And on our way back, we're going through Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I'm going know to what meet. That means. What? Isn't it the Silver Needle? Yes. Uh, I'm so proud of you. Hey, I'm like a geography whiz. <laughs> <laughs> Wawa Sea is not in, the, uh, yeah. in northern Wisconsin. Oh. Well, um, we're going to meet my friend Krista, and she and I are going to go to the Silver Needle. And I am very excited. Is there Harbor Freight next door? Uh, there probably is. Oh, there should be. I didn't check. Um, but I, I just, I've got a bucket list of stitching stores and one by one we're checking them off, which is neat. And, you know, I don't know if floss tubers or people that watch floss tube, I don't know if they enjoy seeing, you know, snippets of the stores, the needle shops, but we enjoy doing that, and so I think we will continue to show uh, stores like that when we travel. Uh, some people don't have the means to travel, meaning they um, maybe don't can't travel, they don't have health concerns and can't travel, or maybe they don't have time off from work, or maybe they don't have anyone to go with, and they so. I hope that they enjoy seeing those pictures because we've got a couple videos waiting to be um, edited that show like uh, Hobby House in New York and um, Sue Spargo's quilt shop in Ohio. So um, just very quickly to wrap things up, um, I would like to recommend the book, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And it's 
fantastic. I couldn't stop listening to it. I, I mean, <laughs> I know it's not reading, but when you read, you can only do one thing at a time. Uh, so this cracks me when up. you listen, you can do other things and listen to the book. And I love it. Gotcha. And then also want to say thank you to our new subscribers. And we've, we've had quite a few and I'm so grateful. So new subs created needleworker Kim. I'm sorry, contented needleworker Kim, Sarah Stitchery, Green Stick Cottage, and Kathy Marshall. So those are just a few. Uh, those were the first ones that came up. So those are the ones that I mentioned, but I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. I really do. And given a thumbs up and left a comment. It all helps the algorithm. And man, do I wish we could figure that out. But I don't think anybody's figured that out. <sighs> yeah, probably not. But uh, just one other very quick little plug for, I just want to say again that I love my way of storing fabric because I can see it and then I've got it listed what it is and like when I was preparing for this video today I didn't have down what something was on stitched on and I could easily compare it and I had my labels there so um, these are it's fabric that's wrapped in um, comic, boards. comic book boards and just got those off of Amazon and then it came with clips and so the clips you don't have to use pins for your fabric telling you it's worth the time it took to do it and um, makes it so much easier to find stuff so having said that here is cheers to hobbies and mental health and here is cheers to happy stitching <music>